I Am the Specialist of the Strange, written by Dakota Franson, narrated by Douglas MacArthur, published by Bald and Bonkers Network, LLC. Section 6, Officially an Adult, Part 3. March 27, 2017. As I have grown tired with the long days that seem to be a poor attempt to extend our trip, I have forgotten to keep this journal updated as I went on. It is through photos I took that I am able to jot down the rest of my trip, so the exact days may be slightly off. This was the day we were all waiting for, the day we got to play with the elephants. Early in the morning, we took off for an elephant sanctuary, as our tour director was able to have our group in particular get to stay a couple hours longer than originally planned, which made everyone in the group very excited. We were instructed to bring our swimming suits and a change of clothes, as our activities would include bathing with the elephants. On top of feeding and just being in the presence of these beautiful animals was an absolutely amazing experience. The elephants themselves were apparently quite mischievous, especially the 18-month-old Tum Took. There was a warning about getting too close to the baby as he liked to squeeze people from behind, usually going for around the neck. Censored furthered this warning by showing us a picture of him in that very situation. Tum Took wasn't trying to hurt anyone, he just wanted to play. After our time with the elephants, it was time to go to lunch at a butterfly and orchid farm. All of our lunches were buffets, and as I mentioned before, the food was surprisingly delicious. March 28, 2017. Last day in Chiang Mai, the post-travel blues definitely settling in among the group. We had a couple more activities to check out just to get our minds off the end of the trails. Censored are all feeling it pretty heavy but we're doing what we can to embrace the last moments and keep in touch once we were forced to walk our separate ways. I think I might have to do a book dedication in their honor. Censored actually gave me his email so I can actually send him a free digital copy of it to prove it. Anyway, our first stop was Kayao Karen Long Neck Tribe. Censored handed us out biscuits to give to the tribe's children. They must have received a lot of tourists because they had several shops with knickknacks and a few other activities. They even had an option to test fire a crossbow. Our tour buses couldn't make it to where the tribe was located, so we had to hitch a ride in Thai taxis, which were similar to transport rigs for troops. Afterwards, we visited one more temple, the Grand Palace. The monks provided fortune-telling, holy water blessings, and the monastery had a gorgeous view of Chiang Mai if the fog wasn't there. It was quite interesting to see the many statues, and the history was always an interesting read. I never understood why, but cultures with many thousands of years of background history always appealed to my interests. The Romans, most Asian cultures, things of that nature. We ended the day with a trip to the nearby shopping mall. I did notice that sex trafficking warnings were posted all over, so those who knew my connections understood why I did what I did. I had suspicions the girls were being watched, so I did what I could to discreetly get the individuals watching the to turn away. That night, we didn't go back to our hotel for long, as we were scheduled to fly from Chiang Mai back to Bangkok. Because it was a domestic flight, all of us had to check in our bags. Once in Bangkok, we were going to have a brief dinner at the first hotel we stayed at and head straight for bed. Before I could fall asleep, my own post-travel blues hit me hard. I started crying about leaving the group. I was just going to miss everyone, okay? Censored. Brought around copies of the first group photo, actually setting off the post-travel blues even more. I found myself saying the photo itself to feel empty because it was the day Censored had to stay at the hotel since she was sick. Ironically, it was also the reason I felt like I need to watch over her. March 29th to 31st, 2017. We left the hotel early to enjoy some downtime and navigate the airport. Although censored couldn't come with us, we captured photos together at check-in. I got a photo with censored to stay in touch just in case we couldn't meet later. Censored and my former teacher planned to connect online, which could help me reconnect with censored too. The flights were predictably uncomfortable. We retraced our steps back home, starting with a layover in Hong Kong after leaving Bangkok. Censored scouted for a good eatery, and Censored suggested trying the fried prawn dish where we dined. 
Time flew, and we had to rush our meal before dashing through the airport, only to wait for our lengthy 13-hour flight to San Francisco. In San Francisco, the Spokane and Boise groups prepared to part ways. With seven hours before our flights, we seized the opportunity to spend a little more time together. As the Spokane group departed, we from Boise proceeded to our gate. I shared my feelings with a friend, seeking solace as the journey's end neared, and found comfort in some food while waiting. Boarding the plane, I settled into a window seat, knowing it was just a few hours until I'd be back in Boise, facing farewells. We touched down near 10.30 p.m., where my mother and grandmother greeted me. Before leaving, I managed to sneak in some final hugs at baggage claim. The drive home was long, and I didn't arrive until after 1 a.m. on the 31st. I should note one of the mothers on the trip, who I confessed about my post-travel depression settling in, compared my situation to soldiers coming home after getting close to others in their unit. So the cliché, walls around my heart have to be put up, and I have to maintain a certain attitude to protect myself so I can keep going and reach out to more people. When I started traveling, an interesting phenomena took place. The walls came down. The protective instincts my life has given me and my training stay there, but the walls find openings within themselves and allow others in. April 12, 2017 not much has been taking place since I got back to reality. A fugitive that caused a chase was apprehended. No updates on the racial incidents mentioned in the last posting. Not much to mention. One of my friends from my day job is leaving, but nothing too special. This is more of a reflective posting. I meditated on images from Thailand as some of my automatic writing sessions indicated I saw this venture coming and it somehow may be linked to Olivia. I swore I've had dreams showing me in lush tropical areas identical to areas I visit in Thailand. Something was watching me, someone very similar in appearance to one of the girls in my travel group, at least in passing. April 23, 2017. It's been nearly a month since my return from Thailand, and there have been some noteworthy developments. In my social circles, censored bashed also seems to have ceased communication after learning about my enrollment in a private investigation course. Despite being a friend, he sometimes shows envy as I progress in life. He acknowledges my strategic approach, but his actions suggest some underlying discontent, personal conversations about what's been going on in his life. However, show that I've been blind to what he's been going through. Moving on, I plan to reach out to Censored this week to obtain Censored. They showed interest in the Scotland and Ireland trip, especially Censored, who seemed fascinated by the tales of leprechauns and fairies. My experience in paranormal investigation might pique her interest. In family matters, a disagreement erupted between my mother and me when I shared my candid opinion on escorting Censored to her school play, which I found lackluster. Censored Das was prevented from performing during school due to a sudden drop in her grades, and I believe she should have been excluded entirely. Further discussion uncovered her aggressive behavior towards other students, which my mother dismisses, likely because it supports my apparent hostility. In my pursuit of crime fighting, I've applied to the Censored to further validate my investigative skills and promote my business. My application is pending, and once accepted, the program should take three to six months to complete. I plan to finance my studies independently, eager to engage with material that will be of practical use. Regarding the arts, I'm considering a strategy to increase music sales. My distributor recently introduced a licensing feature allowing for legal cover song distribution. My plan is to weave unrelated songs into a narrative, starting with Desperado by the Eagles, Hurt by Nine Inch Nails, and I Don't Want to Miss a Thing by Aerosmith, crafting a tale of an outlaw caught in a relentless cycle of love and loss. My upcoming book, The Ones Who Walk All Worlds, Lovers Cry Part Two, is taking shape after overcoming a severe case of writer's block. It's currently focused on the perspective of the love interest from a giant's curse, and I'm curious to see how the story will unfold. May 3rd, 2017. I've been accepted into a program that's set to bolster my business and potentially shape my career. Interestingly, my law enforcement activities garner less public skepticism, 
perhaps due to my presence. The program has already proven beneficial, offering resources for new equipment and investigative techniques. I'm confident in my choice. It allows me to self-fund my education, learn subjects that fascinate me outside the standard curriculum, and leverage my innate skills. With the rise in infidelity, drug crimes, and general folly, I could very well establish my enterprise locally. This path, however, presents its own set of challenges, but I believe I have some solutions. Like all my endeavors, I must approach each step as a strategic risk, planning for as many contingencies as possible. Prioritizing car maintenance is key for me right now to extend its life. It seems the car needs minor fixes, like an alignment and a hub bearing replacement, which are manageable for a car savvy person, unlike myself. On the bright side, a substantial paycheck from my day job, including overtime, is on its way to cover these costs. I've also paused the automatic payments for my Scotland and Ireland trip to free up some funds. On another note, my t-shirt fundraiser for seed money hasn't been successful, so I'm considering it solely for charity now. However, I've discovered stock brokerage as a potential funding source. I'm exploring a platform that allows investing in stocks with any budget. I plan to maintain my day job for financial security while I navigate this new venture. I've already invested in a film studio called Censored, whose recent movie Censored has been well received. Although it's not showing in Idaho, I'm awaiting its DVD release and considering increasing my investment as the studio gains more recognition. Either way, things are about to get interesting. As it stands, I'll need to adjust my various projects accordingly. In music, I'm putting a hold on the cover song plans for now. I might consider doing a single song to accompany future book releases as a thematic element, but that requires further exploration. In books, I'm aiming to establish a new daily routine that includes at least 30 minutes to an hour of writing to meet the increasing demands. I plan to pause work on The Ones Who Walk All Worlds after releasing Lover's Cry Part 2 to explore other genres. Although I started designing a title for this journal last night, it seems this task will have to be postponed. In movies slash television, I've decided to remain off camera for the time being. I'm looking to delve deeper into an investigative role which I believe will yield plenty of fresh material for screenwriting. I'm open to making cameo appearances if opportunities present themselves, but for now, I'll continue with my usual approach. In gaming, I attempted to launch a gaming channel on YouTube, but I've decided to drop that endeavor and keep gaming solely as a stress reliever. Holding on to my childhood favorites should help maintain a clear mind in travel. There are no planned changes here unless a major conflict arises. The experiences are too enriching to give up, and the travel company I use consistently delivers engaging adventures. The upcoming Scotland and Ireland trip will likely be my last with the high school group. The tour company offers various programs tailored to different age groups, and after my next European trip, I'm considering joining the College Break Tour, designed for 18 to 28-year-olds. While I enjoy chaperoning the younger crowd, it's time I travel with peers closer to my own age. May, June, 2017. I'm being stalked at work, tires slashed twice, all because I told a guy I thought was a friend a baby his fiance was pregnant with was not his child. It didn't take much to figure out he was involved. The fucking moron needs his head bashed in for how stupid he's acting, but he's not exactly thinking with the head on his shoulders. May 12, 2017, a scumbag I have been monitoring for the past few months has committed vandalism today, and I was the target. As I was working at my day job, I received a phone call from my mother stating all of my tires were flat and I needed to get outside immediately. I was able to clearly see the entry wounds on all tires, but another thing caught my attention. A familiar face was watching me from a truck. The suspect's boyfriend, an old friend of mine from high school, drives an older model red pickup truck with a large American flag sticking out of the bed of it. The suspect was watching me from a vehicle by the same description. I'm going to pester the managerial staff at my day job until they let me see the tapes, just so I can confirm my suspicions. The woman probably thinks she would get away with it since she is set to enter a guilty plea come Monday. Jesus, my friend, is pathetic moron 
for wanting to stick with this chick. Motives for the actions likely stemming from me egging my friend on about alleged pregnancy news. My friend has admitted she has cheated on several occasions, purchased drugs from another suspect I have been monitoring, and I have caught her breaking into my friend's truck the last time they were together. It should be noted my friend is also suicidal, and the last time these two broke it off, he got very dark. But in light of recent events, I have classified him as Stage 2 SI, SI standing for Stupid Idiot. Little do the outsiders realize I have a tendency to set up my targets to attack in order to get enough witnesses to throw out any speculation of innocence. And once again, the system worked. I just have to tie the evidence together. May 17, 2017. On Mother's Day, my tires were slashed again, finally pushing forward the investigation as it was easy to determine this was a targeted attack. I was able to spot at least three possible suspects stalking the area as I was leaving my day job and passed the collected intel to the officer who took the case. I was also able to uncover that the tire department that worked on my car had a few other similar incidents take place over the last couple weeks. As I was speaking to the officer yesterday, I brought this up to see if she was aware of said incidents, but none came up. If my incident is indeed connected, I may have to approach this at a new angle. At home, my sister, Censored came home with an interesting invite from her school. One of her teachers is organizing a summer vacation trip for the 2019, going through Paris, Nice, Florence, Pisa, and Rome. The trip is organized through the company my last few trips have been through, so I already know she'd be in good hands. My mother has a stipulation she would need a chaperone with her to keep an eye on her. Naturally, Censored leaned towards having me join her, she is at the age she won't want any relatives with her, but having her brother along, who's been in the region and less likely to pressure her the entire time and actually let her have some fun is easily the more tolerable choice. There is a meeting next Wednesday. I might try to sneak her too so she can actually get the information from someone. She'll at least pretend to pay attention. My mother tried to bar her from going, but a part of me wondered if getting to go on one of these exotic trips would do my sister some good to get her act together. I took her against my mother's wishes with the only stipulation she keep out of trouble. One incident and it was done for. A teaching moment, perhaps, if my sister hadn't been caught yet again exploiting herself off to boys in her class. It probably worked out for the best. As I learned that the HR lady at my work goes on this trip every year. May 18, 2017, the management finally revealed surveillance photos to me, capturing the person who slashed my tires. I could just make out the culprit, a male in his early to mid-forties with a skater gang look, foolish enough to shop right after his first offense. This shifts the case's strategy somewhat, but my immediate action was to apologize to my friend for my initial reaction, though not for my words. Interestingly, the suspect showed up again today, providing a chance to uncover his identity, and my friend obvious to the fact I watched him signally the suspect to get away. The case is unfolding. May 21st, 2017. The individual who has been targeting me has yet to make another appearance, which is probably the only smart thing he has done. I will continue to wait for the opportunity to get a photo of him with other subjects in question. But... An interesting note should be made in the event it turns into something. A male in his early 20s was taken by ambulance to the hospital for a series of stab wounds. Not much else was reported. It could be unrelated, but it could mean a confrontation among the group of suspects took place. The one who started this chain of events didn't show up for work today, when he looked just fine yesterday. I will need to continue to monitor the situation. Regardless of how it unfolds, I still gotta keep going. May 24th, 2017. I did some surveillance at my day job in order to hopefully spot the suspect who slashed my tires, but was unable to locate him. It seems my friend passed along the news I was looking into a gun and that the suspect was caught on camera. That only points it all to him even more. Managerial staff showed the photo to my uncle, however, and it should be noted deception in is the air. It appears my friend lied about the suspect's identity. I cannot say for sure yet, but it's an interesting development. 
As for the weapon, I am looking into a EAA Witness 9mm pistol as my sidearm. I found one for a good price and will be talking to an old friend at a local pawn shop to see if they can help with the arrangements. People should really stop underestimating how far I'll go to stand my ground, or the people who will only stop me to make sure I use the right tools to get the job done. If you're going to do something, you may as well be smart about it. May 25th, 2017, I recently grabbed a copy of Logan after its home release. As a film industry enthusiast, I recognize its exceptional production, yet it stirs unique thoughts within me, especially following the tire incident. Continuing down this path, I feel compelled to embody Wolverine, not just the battle-scarred loner, but the formidable weapon. I'm already the person who cares deeply, perhaps too much. It's now a matter of all or nothing. I need to delve deeper into learning, mastering firearms, blades, self-defense, martial arts, and advanced weaponry. I must grow stronger, quicker, wiser. I must confront my inner demons and prepare for battle. Wolverine is a part of my identity, integrated into my brand, but I aim to evolve into an unprecedented force. I must absorb wisdom from the greatest. October 31st, 2017. Rumors of a satanic cult in the area participating in animal sacrifices started to resurface again, possibly due to the fact it is Halloween. I do believe there is something to the rumors, but as far as finding a tangible thread to take the threat on, that has proven difficult. November 11th, 2017. I contacted an old friend who has bugged me about joining in on a hunt since I met him about five years ago to discuss the details of the time travel investigation to see if he could prove any more ideas to better improve the already slim chances of actually pulling off such a stunt. He didn't provide much input on that matter, but brought up another situation he was dealing with that I might have been able to provide an assist. He believed he was being stalked by an entity known as the Hat Man. Eyewitness accounts, including my own, describe him as a shadow person who appears to wear a trench coat and a fedora-like hat. Others include details of glowing red eyes, a suit, a briefcase, and even a cane. Many people believe the hat man is a bringer of misfortune, that he likes to cause chaos. The truth is he simply can sense when someone is under heavy emotional stress and likes to stir things up a bit. I have reason to believe the hat man was once human but was quite the asshole. I had a run-in with him in my early days right around the time I was dealing with my father's actions. It was through this encounter I was able to figure out how to get rid of him, which the advice I forwarded to him. Just tell the guy to piss off. The exact specifics are much more difficult, but it is the basic idea. The hat man is a supernatural bully, so telling him to screw off is part of it, but there are entire processes to completely eliminate supernatural threats like that. I may include something like a paranormal encyclopedia in the Franson Files initiative when I finally get around to writing it. Maybe a sort of compendium, rather. <laughs>